Hello fellow geeks and welcome back to Running Geek Girl. My name is Heather and I'm glad you're here today because I'm going to be giving you a little bit of information about my strategy going into the Little Rock Marathon, which is happening in less than a week. So if you would like to follow along with this and see what happens on race day, make sure that you have clicked that subscribe button. Make sure that you turn on notifications so that you don't miss this or any of the other running content that I have coming out all the time. Let's go ahead and jump in to some of the specs of what's going to happen on marathon day as far as i can tell first of all the little Rock marathon is going to be held on sunday november 21st of 2021 typically the little Rock marathon is held in march however they did have to postpone this year due to concerns of covid cases being on the rise and so they moved it to the next available date that they had for the state house convention center which was in november so I've been training a really, really long time for this race and I am ready to get it out of the way because the anticipation is really starting to kill me. Now the race itself is scheduled to start at eight o'clock. If you are expected to take longer than six hours to finish the entire marathon course, then they do have the option of an early start at 6 a.m. However, you would have to apply for a special bib and apply to be able to do the early start so it's not one of those things that you can just do at the last minute. I'm going to be doing the general start, which starts at eight. However, for how far back my corral is probably going to be, I do not know exactly what time I'm going to be started because the eight o'clock is obviously going to be for corral A, which are the elites and the faster runners. And I'm gonna be in the you know mid to back of the pack runners. So there's no telling what time I will actually start. Gun time is, eight o'clock and we'll see what time my chip time is. If you would like to follow along with my progress on the race, I'm gonna have a link down below where you can download the Little Rock Marathon tracker. As of right now, I do not have my bib number. However, if you follow me on social media, I will make sure that that bib number gets up as soon as I pick it up at the expo so that you can type that in and follow me on marathon day. And also any other runners that you may know of who will be running the Little Rock Marathon or Half Marathon along with me as both of those races will be happening at the same time. We're looking at some really good weather coming up over race day weekend. It's looking like around the start time of the race, we should be at about 40 degrees or uh, four degrees Celsius. And by the end of the race, it should have moved up to about 65 degrees, which would be 18 Celsius. And we are looking to have a uh, sunny and slightly cloudy weather hopefully not too much wind that's gonna blow us off course. Uh, we do have some rain that will be moving in that evening. So there is a possibility of some wind on the course that day since that storm front is going to be moving through. However, they're not looking at any wind right now. So here's hoping that things go uh, calmly and smoothly over the course of the race. Now the start and finish line are going to be on the Hart Boulevard, which is outside of the State House Convention Center, which is the main runner area Area. It's got the big reunion area, the start and finish shoot, metal pickup photos, and so on and so forth. Uh, the metal area is confined to just people who have a bib. However, anybody can get into the reunion area so you can meet with your family and friends there after you have gotten your medal and your photo taken. You can eat, you can get a massage, you can get something to drink. Uh, they will have some free food and then they will have some other food available if you would like to buy more, which I'm sure I will. I'm sure I'm going to be starving by the end of the marathon. Aid stations are set up approximately every two miles or so. And for the last, it looks like seven or eight miles there's going to be an aid station at every mile marker, including I found out a lipstick station at uh, mile 26. Little Rock does have a L'Oreal factory. And so since they make makeup, they're going to have a makeup stop just before you get to the finish line so that you can freshen up and look great for those post-race photos. So let's talk a little bit about my strategy as far as my pacing goes. Now, most of you know that I've been doing kind of a run walk approach. I've done a whole bunch of different variations on it over the past year, trying to figure out what's going to work the best for me. And I believe what is going to work for me on marathon day is if I do a nine minute run to one minute walk ratio. Normally I would do much shorter ratios than that, um, maybe like a two minute to one minute, but I'm just feeling like this may be the one that kind of carries me. I also experimented with some uh, five mile to one mile. And so 
If I get too tired, I may switch to that towards the end of the race, but what I am mainly focused on right now is a nine minute run to one minute recovery walk and then pick that up again. Um, I've been able to lock in on about uh, 11 minute, 20 second miles just by doing that. And I feel like that's a comfortable pace for me. Again, I'm not out to BQ. I'm not out to, uh, you know, set any records. Anything that I do at this point is going to be a PR for me because I just want to get to that finish line. I really just want to finish. That will be a huge victory for me as this will be the longest distance that I have really ever covered. As far as fueling goes now, I mentioned that there's going to be Gatorade at every aid station, and that is something that I have practiced with before. Um, more recently, I've been using Tailwind. However, I really don't want to have to bring hydration with me on the course. Um, I do feel that there's going to be plenty of hydration available out on the course, and so that's what I'm going to stick to. If that ends up being a problem, then um, I do have someone that is coming with me, and I can let them know as we meet up on the course if I'm going to need them to meet me somewhere with extra hydration. But I really do feel that uh, switching back and forth between Gatorade and water in between each aid station is going to be something that's going to work pretty well for me. Um, I don't really see uh, it causing any problems with my stomach or anything like that because again these are things that I have practiced with at home before. So we're going to stick to the hydration that is going to be on the course. The fuel that's going to be on the course from what I understand is going to be honey stinger gels and chews. I've not had a lot of success with those when I have used them just the few times that I have used them. And so I'm going to be bringing my own fuel on the course and I'm going to be alternating back and forth between two fuels that I use pretty exclusively for my longest runs that I've been doing over the past few months. And the first is going to be Sports Beans by Jelly Belly. These are great. Um, they are quick energy. They've got carbs. They've got electrolytes. They've got vitamin B and C. Uh, it's 100 calories per package. This is the strawberry banana smoothie flavor, which is my favorite. They're sweet, but not too sweet. And they come in a resealable package. So if I don't feel the need to eat all of them, which I usually go ahead and eat all of them, um, if I don't eat all of them, then I can seal them up and stick them back in my pocket to finish them later. Typically what I will do is I will walk during a refueling break. I have not perfected the art of refueling while running. It's just not, you know, in my wheelhouse, but um, I do feel that uh, I can get these down quickly and easily enough so that I can continue running. My other fuel that I'm going to be turning to is going to be Go Go Squeeze in Apple. Um, I usually use Apple Apple or Apple Cinnamon. This again, very easy on the stomach, very easy to consume. I can uh, fold it up and just stick it in a pocket if there's not a trash can available by the time that I finish. And this is a super quick carb and definitely within the course of a race, you do want a fast acting carb in order to refuel your glycogen supplies. So. Simple carbs are the way to go. Applesauce I've found is one that's easy on the stomach. It is filling. Um, it's got enough natural sugars in it to keep me going. So those are what I'm going to be turning to, the sports beans and the applesauce, and I will alternate those usually around every five miles or so is when I will refuel. Now you may be wondering if I'm not taking any type of hydration vest with me or anything like that, then where am I going to be sticking my fuel? And I believe in having pockets in my running outfit at all times. I'm one of those people that kind of needs to have my phone near me. Um, I use my Apple Watch for tracking. I use my phone for tracking. Uh, I also listen to podcasts while I am running. It's just something that I do while training. And so in order to kind of calm me down and keep me in the right headspace, then what I do in training, I will do that during the race as well. And so I will have my Aftershocks headphones with me, keeping my ears open so that I can still hear instructions, hear people coming up behind me and things like that, and still be able to find something to kind of throw my focus to if I need to distract myself from what's going on at the moment. So my first set of pockets are going to be in these shorts. I've had these shorts for I don't know how long, um, probably since I was running about a year or so and I decided that I needed shorts with pockets, but uh, I'm not sure what brand they are. I've had them for so long that the label has worn off. So I'm not 100% sure. I do remember that I got them in a set of four and it was a, a Groupon deal. Somebody on one of my running groups mentioned it. And so I jumped in and got a bunch of these. Um, they were four for like $25. So it was a really good deal, but there's a pocket on each side. There is a zipper pocket in the back if I need it. 
They are, uh, they have slight bit of compression, but they are very easy to run in and they are going to go underneath this right here, which is my Alice in Wonderland skirt. Now, you have probably seen it advertised that Runderland is the theme for the Little Rock Marathon this year. They have a new theme every year and they uh, style all of the medals around the theme. And so I went with the Alice in Wonderland theme. This was one that came up on a Run Disney group. Somebody had a mom that had made a costume for them for a Disney race and she no longer needed this and so I bought this off of her. You can tell that it is homemade which I find absolutely charming but I have this nice little Alice skirt and it also came with this nice little headband nice and sparkly has a black bow on it just like Alice. Along with that I'm going to be wearing a sports bra by Queen Aki. I'm either going to be wearing this one or I have one just like it that is in black. Now what I like about this bra besides the fact that it is comfortable and it does not chafe in the areas where I do not want it to chafe but it also has this nice pocket on the back in between the shoulders which is a super convenient place to stick my phone if I need it. I can always reach out and grab it if I need it. And on top of that I have this nice light blue top. This is a uh, tech shirt from Under Armour and it is so soft and so comfortable. I have run in this several times just to make sure that nothing was going to chafe and it is honestly one of the softest shirts that I have ever worn in my entire life. So I'm going to be wearing this along with the skirt in order to make a complete Alice look. Since it is going to be chilly and I will eventually end up sweating as it gets warmer, I'm going to be wearing these nice white sleeves by Sports Trail. These are wonderful for wicking away sweat and for keeping my arms warm when I need them to be. Underneath it all, a great pair of Runderwear briefs. These things are the most comfortable running underwear that you could possibly find. They are the most comfortable things I've ever worn in my entire life. So I definitely want something that is not going to chafe or be uncomfortable in any way while I am running. So these are a must. Finally, I'm going to be wearing these black and white pro compression socks. I do like wearing compression socks while I run longer distances. They just are comfortable. They help keep the blood flowing in a way that I need them to go. And they kind of just keep me held together until I can cross the finish line. So that is the whole costume, the whole look. And if you'll stick with me and check my social media, I will have a flat lay so that you can see everything all together and see what it looks out. And of course, see how it looks on me on race day. And of course, the big question that I get from everyone one is what shoes are you going to wear for the marathon and I have gone back and forth on this for the last month. I was originally going to wear the Asics uh, Gel Nimbus Light 2s and um, they're very good for picking up speed when you need to. However, I really think that I'm going to need just a little bit of extra cushioning. And the reason that they are lighter and allow you to pick up more speed is because they have slightly less cushioning than the regular gel Nimbus. And really with as much as my feet tend to swell and hurt, especially past mile 20 or so, I'm gonna need as much cushioning as I can get. I'm not going to be as worried about speed at that point as much as just trying to get to the finish line and not die. So I'm going to be going with the Gel Nimbus 22s. These are super, super comfortable. Uh, I love these for long runs. And while they do tend to be just a little bit on the heavier side, they do give me a great amount of cushioning that I really think will help keep me going all the way across the finish line in somewhat relative comfort. I am probably going to be in pain from uh, like my glutes and my hamstrings. That usually happens to me on super long runs. And so if I can make my feet just a little bit more comfortable, then I'm going to take that opportunity. So these will most likely be the shoes that I will be wearing on race day. So with all of that in mind, let's just talk about some of my thoughts about going into the race itself. This has been a long time coming. I have been training for this for close to a year now, and I'm the anticipation has just been building. And especially since if you've seen the story of my first marathon that I ran uh, when I just, I didn't really know enough as a runner, it didn't go well. Uh, if you've missed that, then, you know, long story short is that I didn't understand pacing. I didn't understand hydration. I didn't know enough about myself as a runner, how I would react to different situations, different type of weather and things like that. 
I just didn't know enough about myself and therefore just kind of crashed and burned around mile 20. And so that had always been my longest distance for a long time. I have surpassed that distance in this training. My longest training run has been 24 miles. And so I know technically I can get it done. It's just knowing that there's so much that's out of my control as far as the weather, the road conditions. I've been training, training, training for hills. And I do know that there are some hills on this course. And so I'm just absolutely praying that I'm still able to handle them as well as I've been handling them in practice. But again, it's like you just don't know what's going to happen on race day. I've put so much into this that I really just don't want to disappoint myself. Um, I, I don't want to have put so much work into this. And I know that really the work going into it, that's really the marathon itself. And that, you know, race day is really just the icing on the cake. It's my victory lap. but. It's something that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. I've been wanting to finish a marathon and I, I just don't want to let myself down. I don't want to let anybody else down. I know a lot of people have been following my journey on this and I, I really don't want to let any of you down either. But I do feel a lot more confident going into this marathon than I have for anything else before because this is the most preparation I have done for any race and so I'm, I'm really just hoping that things go well. For the meantime, I'm spending the rest of taper concentrating on resting, especially my left foot. My left foot has been giving me a little bit of trouble. It, it tends to get a little twinge of pain every now and then and sometimes cramp up after the end of a long day. So I'm concentrating on just making sure that I still keep my legs moving, but also I, you know, I need to rest. And so, we're just going to see what happens. So if you'd like to see what happens, make sure that you click that subscribe button down below so that you don't miss any of the upcoming running content that I have on this channel, including what happens at the Little Rock Marathon, which is coming up so, so soon. You can also follow me on social media, which is where I will give you my bib number if you would like to follow me on the Little Rock Marathon app and find lots of other fun stuff that I do, lots of fun running and geeky things. All of those links are gonna be down in the description and you can find me across all platforms under the name Running Geek Girl. Thanks so much for being here. I'm so glad that you've been going on this journey with me and I can't wait to see you next time. Happy running.